Make your luggage stand out with a really cute and colorful luggage tag. You can use these same techniques to make bookmarks, or decorate just about anything in polymer clay. Hi there, Sandy Huntress here for Create Along, bringing you a project using the Ocean of Dreams Create Along box. So this cute little fish stencil came in the Ocean of Dreams Create Along box, and I am going to use this to make a luggage tag along with the magic transfer paper and a really fun, simple coloring technique. So the first thing we need to do is cut out our template, and we'll need to do that three times for a luggage tag. If you're making a bookmark, you could just cut out two thinner ones and then glue a ribbon in between after they've baked and you'd have a really cute bookmark. There's all kinds of things you can use this for. I'm using the largest one. So I've got a sheet of clay he rolled out on a number two setting of my pasta machine, which is about two millimeters thick. And take your time and cut this out accurately because we're going to be stacking three layers together. So it's helpful if they're all the same size and shape. You're going to cut two of these shapes out of the thicker clay, the number two setting, as I said, about two millimeters thick. The other sheet of clay I have here is rolled out to about a millimeter thick, which is a seven on my pasta machine and you just need to cut one fish out of that. I've cut out my three fishies and removed the excess clay. Now for the two thicker ones, just take your finger and gently stroke along the edge. I think this gives it a more finished appearance. It just softens that cut line. This one you don't have to do anything with. Now we'll set this aside for a moment. In order to get the placement for your luggage tag accurate, you need to make yourself a little template. So I have here just a piece of index card and a pencil and I'm going to trace my fish on the card. I'm going to use this little one half inch by three quarter inch cutter to cut out the slot in one of the pieces where the name and address will show through the tag or the name or whatever information you want to show. So I'm going to position that where I want it on the fish and trace around it. Next I'm going to take a ruler and draw a line just a smidge outside of that cutter line all the way to the head of the fish. Do that on both sides of your rectangle shape. and also draw a line on the side furthest from the fish's head, about the same distance away from the cutter line. And also I'll draw a circle. This is important. This is what the chain for the luggage tag will go through and it will also keep your piece of paper in here, keep it from coming out. Now you just need to cut this out. I've already done that and now we can bring back our polymer clay pieces. So on this one, one of the thicker ones, I'm going to place that template on and use that to position my cutter. So there should be an equal distance around these three sides of the paper. And cut out that little window. I'm also going to put this on here. Actually, first I want to I want to make the hole with my awl first, so I'm not pressing into the clay. So I just there. So I'll mark the center of my hole. On this one, all I need to mark is the center of the hole. And on this one, I need to cut out that entire slot that I drew. Making this a little bit bigger than the rectangle cutout means that we can put a 
piece of paper in there. You can also put a piece of acetate in there. And it will be just a little bit bigger so it will stay in place. There. There's our three pieces. Now you can decorate the front, the back, or both as you like. I am going to use the magic transfer paper. And if you just fold your magic transfer paper in half, you should be able to just get two fish. You can just decorate the front, but I thought it would be nice since you usually end up seeing both sides of a luggage tag to decorate both. So the way this works best is if you place your magic transfer paper on and burnish it pretty well and then leave it to sit for a while. So these have sat for a while, so now it's time to show you the magic in magic transfer paper. If I wasn't recording this, I would simply do it in the kitchen sink, but I just have a bowl here to catch my water. So I have a cup of water. And I'm just going to start pouring it over. You can see just washes away. It's like magic. Just be very gentle with it at this point. When it's wet, it's quite fragile. We can just clean up these edges. Use a dry paper towel to lightly, and I do mean lightly, blot up the water. So there's my design on there. I've also used a little cutter to make the hole for my keychain, my or my whatever ball chain to go through. If you're making a tag that's symmetrical like this one, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you're make if you're using a shape that isn't symmetrical, you'll want to flip over this piece that will be the back. By the way, I'm using pearl clay. You could just use white. That would be fine. Now we can start decorating. What I have here is a really cool technique that I learned from Tim Holt some time ago for working with paper crafts. And these are alcohol inks. And what you do is you buy these little palettes at the craft store and you put a couple of drops of alcohol inks, a different color in each well, and then you let them dry, believe it or not. Then you fill up a pen, one of these water brush pens, with either alcohol blending solution or I happen to have just 91% alcohol. Squeeze it gently just until a little bit of moisture comes out. You do not want a lot. I'm just going to dab that up. Have a bit of paper towel nearby. You just want these bristles barely damp. This is not a technique for precise coloring. Uh, especially these are really small designs, so you're not going to get precision. But you're just going to get kind of overall swaths of color. So now that your your bristles are just barely damp with alcohol or the blending solution, you can see that it will start picking up that alcohol ink. Then you can lay it down wherever you want. See what I mean about not really getting precision. I'm just kind of following these general lines. When you want to change colors, just wipe it. Give it a little squeeze so some of the alcohol comes down and then wipe it until it comes out clean. Then you can move on to another color. So the less alcohol you manage to have on the tip of your brush, the less bleeding you will get. So try to have it as dry as you can manage. Just go ahead and paint in your design. The less alcohol you have on your brush, also the deeper your colors will be. Keep in mind your color theory that if you put uh, opposite colors on the color wheel next to each other, menu, there you are going to get kind of a muddy brown. So I'm putting orange next to yellow, or rather than purple next to yellow, which would make more of a brown color. So let those dry completely. This is 91% alcohol, so it will evaporate very quickly. 
and then leave all three pieces on the tile and bake them at the manufacturer's recommended temperature for at least a half an hour. Here are my pieces out of the oven. You can just use a clay blade to release them from the tile. Now the part that's against the tile is going to be a little bit shiny which may inhibit them sticking together. So get some fine grit sandpaper. I just have some 400 grit here. And sand all of the sides that were against the tile just to knock down that shine a little bit and give some tooth to when you're going to be gluing them together. Now it's time to assemble our pieces. First, do some dry fitting. Find the way that this fits properly. If you didn't perfectly center that one direction, it might work better than the other. It looks like I got a little something extra here, so we'll just trim that off. See, if I put it this way, then that is shifted down too far, so it goes this way. So I'm going to put super glue, and you don't need a ton. Just put a very thin amount all over the back. Line it up and stick it down. And this piece goes on there. We'll oh, end up those holes pretty well. So we'll put super glue again on this center piece because that's the only part that needs glue. And line up your back. And if you don't feel like making a luggage tag, you can make one of these and color both sides and make a keychain. You could make two of them, uh, maybe a little thinner, and sandwich a piece of ribbon in between and have a bookmark. Or you can just use this coloring technique on pretty much anything in polymer clay you want. I use this template to cut myself a little piece of paper that's that size and it stops before that hole and I also cut a piece of acetate. Now we just have to do a little testing to see how it'll fit in there. It might be a little wide. You might have to trim off just the tiniest amount for it to fit. To smooth out these edges, just take your sandpaper and it won't take long before you have them all smooth. You could color those edges with more alcohol ink if you like, or just leave them white. Then slide in your ball chain, add it to your luggage, and you have a colorful tag that is hard to miss. Once again, this is Sandy Huntress for Create Along. Happy creating!